not too loud. The fan. So you can keep it on and see. Awesome. I can turn the fan down too. I put it at the highest setting. Huh. This is good. I think it can be even louder, like the tripod. Oh, awesome. That's good. Alright. Okay, here we go. All right, let me shut this shit off. to Product Gainer episode 72. Uh, it's a, another live episode and another time we have a guest from the States and I'm going to show you a short video about her and then we will jump into the live. So here comes the video. My name is Taylor Clark and you're listening to the Fabulous Journey podcast where I document my journey from walking on fire with Tony Robbins to sitting with Gary V on the Ask Gary V Show. Hey Taylor, it's Gary Vee, you're on the Ask Gary V Show. I wanted to start a vlog, and this is my very first one, being challenged here by Gary V, who called me today and I got to ask him a question on his live show. And now I have people reaching out to me through Digital Nomad Apparel, which is my business that I started. I have DNA, which is Digital Nomad Apparel, as one of my companies that have started. So I talked to you about a year ago. Um, I'm from Buffalo. Why well, I, I, I remember. <laughs> What's up guys? Super excited to be here, super yeah. excited to chat, super, I'm just, I'm pumped. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, I don't know if I've said this to you, but you're actually like one of the dream guests that I've had to this show. Oh my god! So for like a number of reasons, but I feel like it's a um, perfect fit for the like journey that I'm documenting towards VaynerMedia. Yeah. And what you have been through and meeting Gary and documenting your journey so uh oh this yeah, is exciting super exciting i'm so this. pumped this is gonna be great this is gonna be fun yeah. cool uh so um yeah first of all just uh for the people that don't know you uh, yeah tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do who how do you put a really random life into like cliff notes um so my name is taylor i'm from buffalo new york and I'm currently 25 years young, and I've had a pretty crazy life. Uh, in Cliff Notes, though, grew up with two entrepreneur parents. Uh, my dad and his brothers own a company. To be honest, not really sure what exactly they do. Um, my mom's company is the one that I grew up in for, like, the last 20 years. So that kind of shaped me as a person. It's made me very entrepreneurial. She's in, like, the wedding industry, so it's very stressful. And it kind of has allowed me to really just stay calm and chill under high stress, um, which is awesome. And, you know, through life circumstances, I've found my way through the roller coaster of life and become not only entrepreneurial, but extremely much creative. I would say I have a really good left right brain combo. Um, through funny circumstances, I've ended up on the Ask Gary V show a couple times. Um, one of them went massively viral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I find myself now working on making a living living. I think everyone's got the ability to live a life that they love and doing mm -hmm. something that they really enjoy. And there's no reason to not be loving your life unless you just don't know who you are. And that's kind of where I come in now is I'm helping people discover really deep diving into who they are and what they love to do so mm -hmm. that they can go home and live the life that they love. So, so that would be Cliff Notes. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And, uh, I know 
know you have like freedom chaser in your Insta bio. Is yeah. that what your yeah what that, uh, like phrase means? Yeah, so it's something that I've kind of been playing around with. Like, what is my Instagram like title? Like, people mm. have videographer, people have marketing agency, or people have. I'm a coffee expert. Like, I never had any of those because I'm always looking to do different things so mm. often. But the one thing that's always remained the same is I'm, you know, always wanting to be happy. I always want to live in a state of pure joy and bliss. Obviously, that's mm. not like a 24-7. You can't always be happy. But yeah. I'm chasing freedom. I'm chasing that happiness. I'm just chasing a life that I love. So freedom chaser ended up mm. kind of being one that stuck and resonated. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And a lot of times like people describe themselves uh, based on what they are working with mm-hmm. and not so much about how they are as a person. So yeah. Really like, yeah. Um, so how would you like how would you like people to describe you when you're not around? Like what mm-hmm. are the impressions you want to have on people around you? I think I just want to leave a positive impact on people's lives. Um It's funny because if you asked me like five years ago even that same question, I'd probably have a completely different answer. But I think right now in my life what I'm enjoying most is just authentically living and being who I am and knowing if I can touch people's lives in a positive way. Um, It lights me up inside. So it's a little selfish. Like I want to impact your life so much that I leave you with only good things to say about me. So yeah. it's it's kind of funny. It's like the people who love to give, it's because they fill them up. So it's that's kind of what I want people to have an impression of is I did something or just me being myself helped mm. them to do the same or open up the space for them to be themselves. Mm. So yeah, I guess that would be it. That's great. Uh, and that comes up a little bit into this uh, Bali trip as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, we are in Bali right now when we are recording this. Uh, so it's quite <laughs> funny. It's one Swede and one from the yeah. in, Indonesia. And the nice Balinese plant. <laughs> yeah. Totally natural. Uh, totally, it's real. Inside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so tell us a little bit about this trip and like the purpose of this trip that we're doing here. Yeah, so kind of funny how it came about, actually. Um I was reading the book Eat, Pray, Love. I had just watched the movie, and I'm like, oh, my God, I love this movie, this woman. She's, like, figuring out who she is. I've heard of the story Eat, Pray, Love before. Um, So when I started to read the book, it really started to resonate with me, and I kind of decided maybe, like, springtime last year, 2019, uh, that I wanted to go on my own Eat, Pray, Love journey. So I was kind of planning in my brain, like, where would I want to go? I've already studied abroad in Italy, so I didn't feel like I needed to go back there to eat my face off and because I already did that. Um, so I guess I was looking towards, like, India, Thailand, Bali, uh, more spiritual places. I would not say I am extremely spiritual. I wouldn't say I'm any sort of religious. I just kind of flow. Um, so discovering those little pieces of, you know, more enlightenment or answers, I guess Mm. you could say, discovering more about myself than anything else has been a journey that I've been on the last year and a half extremely deeply. So when I was deciding where I wanted to go, I originally thought Thailand, like Chiang Mai, Mm. Thailand was where I wanted to go because it's like the digital nomad hub of the world Mm. and digital nomadism has been something I've been obsessed with for a while now. Uh, and I hired this coach, JB the Wizard, and working with him, he's like, yeah, we can totally, you know, figure that out. He's more of an alignment coach and a public speaking coach, so it's Mm -hmm. funny how I ended up becoming with him, but he kind of shared these little inklings of, I think you should go to Bali, and I'm like, I really think I should go to Thailand. He's like, no, I really think you should go to Bali. Like, you should look into that. I'm like, okay, I'll look into it, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to Thailand, roundabout ended up looking into Bali and I'm like this place is gonna be perfect (laughs) so I ended up you know looking into Bali and you know again I was looking for places for me to stay I wanted to go on a 30-day adventure to start for myself so this whole trip was planned because it was something that I personally wanted to go on to deep dive into myself and you know figure out who I am in a place where there's kind of everything here 
Like, there's the networking, there's the digital nomad aspect, there is, it's an island, so there's that, like, casual beach vibe, coconuts, yeah. there's, you know, adventure, you can go skydiving or scuba diving or surfing, and then you go to the center of the island in Ubud, and it's jungle, and you can just dive into nature, so yeah. it was kind of a little bit of everything I always wanted, uh, and after planning it for myself... A couple of my friends were like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then I tell them, and they're like, that's amazing. So the idea also triggered off, why am I doing this myself? Like, why don't I invite people with me? And after I found, you know, the villa we're staying mm -hmm. in, I just kind of decided, instead of renting one room, why don't mm -hmm. I rent the whole thing? <laughs> yeah. Let's see if people want to go. So I just kind of put it out there to Instagram, and I was like, who would want to join me? And I had an overwhelming response of people who wanted to join. So then it just kind of became, all right, let me connect with people, see who I think the energies would really, you know, vibe well with not only me, but everyone else mm. that I want to bring into the space. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, now we're here and we're living it. It's been pretty yeah. epic so far. Yeah, I agree. It's been really good. And um, like that, this is the reason why I'm here as well, because I saw... Uh, you were talking about this uh, trip in, I think it's June or July last yeah, year. Yeah, so much. Uh, and it sounded really interesting. I always want to go here, but also, uh, m most importantly, like meet up with other people that want to work mm -hmm. on self-development and want to like improve themselves and and have ambitions. So yeah. just being around that energy, I, th I think it's really, uh, can really help us grow together like in the directions we totally want to yeah the so, collaboration of everyone's been pretty epic so far mm, yeah so do you have any plans on doing like similar trips oh yeah, yeah. i think i kind of decided that after maybe like day three being mm. here i'm like everyone here already clicked like day one we instantly all just like became family And after a couple of days, my brain was already firing off. How do I do this again? Mm -hmm. And I think it would actually be pretty easy. It's just taking this entire trip in its entirety and just making it better the next time. And as epic as it is right now, I'm like thinking, how do I make it better? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I got some ideas in my head right now. But yeah, this will definitely be something I do again. And I'm almost thinking maybe this trip is twice a year or maybe mm. three times a year because just so many people need this yeah so like if you should say like some examples of the stuff that we've done here i've been to like a breath work session mm -hmm. and we had a meditation yesterday uh you had like a aura photography yeah yeah there's been a bunch of stuff that's happened so the fun thing about the trip is it's for everyone who's coming here so mm. There's some things that I've planned, but most of it is whatever you want to do. Mm. So the couple of things that I've planned is I had a couple skill shares. So you, like yesterday morning, uh, Muhammad had just arrived mm. and he jumped right into it. And we had a joy meditation yeah. with this woman, Natalie. Mm. Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie. Ugh. Anyway. Um, so Nat was here and she did this amazing joy meditation. And that was one thing that I had planned. Uh, another thing that I have planned is we're staying here in Changu, which is, you know, digital nomad, beach town, like kind of everything centralized right here. And we're going to do a weekend in Ubud, which is in the jungle. And I'm really excited for you guys to experience that. Yeah. Uh, some other things like surf lessons and, you know, the different activities that I've planned were kind of meant more for helping people learn or mm. get out of their comfort zone or do something they might not have booked themselves. And then... Everything else is just kind of what people want to do. So, like, mm. this one guy, D, who's here, he loves to go explore the clubs. So yeah. he's been going to all the beach clubs and, like, meeting people and Aussies and party. And it's it's been fun. He's also a YouTuber and he's young. Yeah. And why not? So he's been doing that. And, you know, me and Brad, Jan, we went to a spiritual entrepreneur mastermind four days ago maybe now. Mm. And that was insane and it was with this uh group called humans i trust and it was i i could go on about that but it was a wild experience 
Um, and like yesterday, me and the girls, me, Domi, and Jess, we went to go get aura photography done and had a reading on that. And it was pretty crazy. So everyone's just kind of doing whatever they're called to do. And most of the group, you know, if someone wants to do something and no one else wants to, there's so many people on the island that they get to do it with as well. Like Dee's mm -hmm. going out and he's meeting people out. So for the most part, everyone's just kind of flowing and doing mm -hmm. what they enjoy and you know, if they want to join other people in activities, they're more than welcome to. And mm. it's it's been a really fun, just, everyone's just flowing. I don't even know how to yeah. say it. And I like how also how the co-working place that is just across the street, yeah. uh, they have like activities, uh, like a schedule with mm -hmm. activities each week. So you can just, like you said, you can just jump in whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, there is like a... Uh, a place there in the co-working station where you can like put up notes if you're searching for collaborations mm -hmm. like I'm searching for a designer or I, uh, I'm searching for a video editor or whatever uh, so yeah it's just a, a perfect place to collaborate with other people yeah well, so. and that was one of the fun reasons why I picked the villa that we're in because mm -hmm. it's a co-living co-working community yeah. so not only do we have the villa that we're staying in I think we occupied at least 80 or 90 percent of the villa so there's been like mm. maybe two or three rooms that are other random people not yeah. in our group but even that's fun because we get to like meet them yeah. and i thought i met this web developer from bulgaria the mm. other day he's yeah. so cool and like you said the co-working station mm. they have so many events just skill mm. shares which is the breathwork one that you were talking about yeah. and it's just a fun introduction into something totally new and totally different mm. and that's one of the I think magical things about the trip is mm. you're never going to know who you are completely or what you like to do unless you try different things and these skill shares that the co-working station are throwing I would say 98% of them are free mm. so you could just yeah. go and learn something new and explore mm. and see oh this breathwork thing was really cool like there mm. were a couple of us who ended up booking a one-on-one -on -one session with the guy afterwards but yeah. if you learn and you're like oh that's pretty cool but Nah, not for me. Cool. Mm. It was free anyway. You just learned something new, yeah. though. So it's it's a pretty cool dynamic of the place that we're at. Yeah, and I understand more why like a lot of digital nomads uh, live here, not mm -hmm. just for like the climate and and stuff, but also for um, like the ability to collaborate with other people and. Uh, like you said, there's like free events, so you can just try out stuff and see what you want to learn more about. Yeah. And uh, the food is also really cheap here, so super even cheap. Even if it costs to get here, you can live here, pretty cheap. Yeah, super uh, cheap. So yeah, I can I recommend it. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty epic place. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm gonna move on with this live because I can't yeah this live without mentioning you. Uh, your meeting with Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, and I know you got like a bunch of questions about this, mm -hmm. but... Uh, totally okay. Yeah, for the people that don't, don't know, know about mm -hmm. this, can you tell us like what happened and how... Yeah, happened? so really crazy manifestation in that in itself, um, which I don't really explain often, but mm -hmm. the week before that call happens, so I'll just preface this, with I was laying in my bed, literally just like staring at my ceiling. It was pitch black and just not in a good place in my life. Uh, lots of stress. You know, I went to school for fashion design and business and I always had this dream of building this apparel brand and, you know, I ended up moving back home and working for my mom's company and as much as I love the wedding industry and her company, it wasn't my deepest passion. It wasn't mm. that thing that I dreamt of, you know. Mm. So I was not living my full ability and my full truth. So I was I was in a rut. I was in like this depressive state. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, mm. I'm not depressed. Like, I'm a happy person. I got mm. dreams. So I remember sitting there and I had just started following Gary maybe like one or two months prior. Mm. And I was, so I was sitting in my bed staring at my ceiling and I'm like, Oh, if I could only have like, if I could just get 10 minutes with Gary V, I know my entire life would change. And I had this thought and I had this conversation with my ceiling and I'm not a religious person. So I'm like talking to the universe, I guess. And I remember like, maybe it was five days later, 
I got the notification because I turned the I turned the notifications on for Gary, and he was doing a YouTube live. Funny mm-hmm. enough, yeah. and. I was like, oh, that's cool. So I clicked on it, and I start watching it, and I realize it's the Ask Gary V show that was playing. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is the first time I had ever seen Ask Gary V live. And all I see is in the comments, you know, the scroll that's going up and disappears is everyone just putting their phone numbers in. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, man, this is how people get on the Ask Gary V show. So I'm like, eh, fuck it. Let's try it. Put my phone number in. And some people are doing it, like, multiple times. They're just, like, mm-hmm. over and over and over again putting their number in. I just put it once. And I see it float up, and it disappears. And I'm like, oh, all right, that was fun. And then, like, within a couple minutes, it crashes. So YouTube Live crashes, yeah. and it, poof, gone. And I'm like, don't think twice about it. I'm yeah. in my living room watching TV, and I just go back to watching TV. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, maybe, like, two or three minutes later, I get a phone call, and it's got a 212 area code, and it yeah. says New York City underneath it. And at the time, I was getting so many spam calls and telemarketer mm. calls, I almost didn't answer it mm. because I was like, ah, oh, fucking telemarketers. Like, I don't want to watch yeah. this <laughs> shit. Um, and I'm like, mm, what if it's actually him? What, are the, what would the chances be, you know? So I pick it up, and I'm like, hello? And he's like, this is Gary Vee. You're on the Ask Gary Vee show. And I'm like, no way. Like, what the fuck? Is this real life? So... From that moment forward, um, I was scrambling because obviously you're on the Ask Gary Vee show to ask him a question. I had no question off the top of my head because I did not prepare for this. I did not expect this to happen. So um, I was, I just kind of went into authenticity, transparency mode, and I just kind of explained where I was at. I'm like, you know, I'm in this rut. I graduated college, you know, a year or two ago, and I've been just like coasting, not living the life that I want, and I don't know how to get out of this space. Like I had no direction. There were no step books. There's no blueprint of this post-college rut you find yourself in. And even after college, people in their 30s, I'm finding out, are in the place too of I'm living this life that I just doesn't fill me up. And I don't know how to change. And I don't know where to go. And what are the steps to getting my happiness back? Nobody nobody has a blueprint for that that I found. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the conversation we had. And I'll be honest. I had a massive blackout moment. I don't remember anything that he said. And I had to wait four days later for D-Rock to edit it and put the episode out um, for me to re-listen to what Gary actually said. But that one conversation just you know, triggered something in me. It was like it reignited the fire to just get to work. Like, just do things. Try things. You're not going to know what you want to do until you try shit. Like, a lot of shit. Like, you got to try a lot of shit to figure it out. So that's kind of, you know, what ended up happening. And I tried a lot of shit. (laughs) And I figured it out. I'm like, not 100% there, but I would say I'm like, 80% 80% figured it out. Mm. And that last 20% is just all I'm fine-tuning right now. Yeah. And I also think, like, it's more of a uh, a process throughout the life than it's, like, a project yeah. that you find yourself and then you're done. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that it's, like, running. You need to keep mm-hmm. doing it the rest of your life to, to like, make sure you are doing the stuff that you want to do mm-hmm. and you're your truly self. Right? Totally. And ironically enough, it ties into my Instagram. Like the fabulous journey mm. was something I started when I was in college, when I was studying abroad, because mm. I wanted to be able to not have to talk to my family every day and tell them what I'm up to. Mm. So I decided to blog about it so they could just read it. But the journey, that's like what life is. Like mm. everyone's on this journey of figuring it out. And I don't think anyone will ever get to a place where it's 100% figured out. Because mm-hmm. life's always changing, culture's always changing, and yeah, it's it's an ever flowing like thing that you're mm-hmm. just on. Yeah. And the more you know yourself, the more you can just navigate through. Mm-hmm. What I really like with that call with Gary is that I felt like you were really transparent, and that it was a lot of people that probably can like resonate to your feelings and yeah, uh, like trying to find out what to do in life and what what way to go mm-hmm. uh, so what was like 
some key things that you did after the call or the, like the following months afterwards that like, yeah. need to change this? Yeah, so even then I didn't know specifically what I should be doing, but you know, after following Gary for a month, like deep diving down the rabbit hole, mm. I knew that there were a couple things that I should do. Document, over creating, because I didn't know what the hell to create. So I was like, fuck, I'll just document. So I decided I was going to do 30-day Gary V challenge because he said in 30 days, I want you to follow up with me and let me know what you did. And I'm like, yeah. all right, 30 days, that's my deadline. And I ended up, you know, finding, uh, putting it out there and saying, hey, would anyone want to edit, you know, this vlog that I want to do for me? I don't have the skill set at all to edit. I still don't to this day. And this guy, Steven, out of California, ended up messaging me and was like, yo, I'll edit for you for 30 days. I'm like, awesome. So that was one thing I did, was I vlogged every single day in those 30 days. And my main goal was just to see how much I could do, how far I could push myself. Uh, and the very first thing, even before um, I started that vlog, was I built a website. Never in my life have I done that before, but I'm like, Shit, people do it all the time. I know WordPress is a thing. Let's yeah. figure it out. So that's what I did. I ended up creating this blog platform for the fabulous mm. journey. And it took me like, and that was immediate. Like I mm. literally went from like downstairs in my living room talking to Gary V to running upstairs, locking myself in my bedroom and building this website. Mm. It was the only thing I could think of to do. Cause I'm like, yeah. oh my God, all these people are following me. I need to have a platform to where I could post my document stuff. Yeah. And I spent six hours figuring that shit out. Mm. And funny enough, the web hosting wasn't working. So then I was on the phone with the web hosting people for like two hours. I'm like, this website is done, but it's not going live. What the fuck? <laughs> and that was like a 24 hour debacle, but that was the first thing I did was I mm. wanted to create a website platform and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So I just, you know, figured it out. And mm. after that and after my 30 day vlog, getting that set up, I really, after that was like, okay, now I got to build a business. Mm. I got to have a business because that's what Gary Vee does. He has businesses, mm. people who follow him, they're entrepreneurs. It's my turn. Um, so this idea that I had been cultivating in my brain for years for this apparel brand that I always wanted to have, I'm like, fuck it, we're just going to put something out there and see what happens. Mm. Um, and that's where the creation of Digital Nomad Apparel came about. And I launched that within 20 days of the Ask Gary V show. And I was mm. like so excited because I was ahead of schedule. I'm like, 20 yeah. days, it's not even 30 yet, and I got the business. Um, oh my God, looking back at that. <laughs> what I put out there was total and utter crap. Um, I would never buy any of my shirts. So it was, oh, because they looked horrible. It was, it was so bad. Uh, looking back, it's very humbling because it was just so bad. But that's what I did. Like, I just got in action mode. I think the average hours of sleep I got every night during that month was like three or four. Mm. Like, I was up to like four or five in the morning and then I slept until like maybe 10 and then I would get up and I would do it all over again and mind you I still worked full-time for my mom so I was working full-time for my mom and then after that I would literally go into hustle mode on my side shit and I would just literally work but I, I was just I think what I did was I built the habit of action couldn't exactly tell you what I was working on. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I was trying to just do something and that action habit mm. that I created has never left me. But I have found the rhythm of, you know, work-life balance because I burnt myself out after like 45 days and I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't have three hours of sleep and operate well. I was getting these massive purple bags under mm. my eyes and I'm like, this is horrible. Um, so I just reevaluated and... I've always just been super authentic and transparent since then because it's, like you said, it was the thing that people watched that mm. they related to. Um, mm. I've gotten hundreds of DMs of people saying, I swear to God, I was watching that and it mm. was like I was talking to him. And I, I had this blackout moment, so I don't even remember why the answers that came out came mm. out, but it must have been the first thing on the top of my head or 
what I had just been scrolling by on Instagram and mm. just kind of stuck to me. I really like what you said there about like the action habit of doing stuff all the time, even yeah. if you don't know, like, is this the right step? Just doing it, you will mm -hmm. learn if it's the right step or not. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you talked about, like, how uh, it can resonate with other people, and that can be, like, a positive thing that they feel like, oh, I, I know what she's talking about, I'm also yeah. there. Uh, but it can also be, it has also been, like... Uh, negative stuff happening from that call like people putting pressure on you for like i'm watching you and saying <laughs> oh stuff like that. yeah so, like, that was fun yeah so how do you like handle <laughs> all that pressure from um, people following you yeah so at the end of that call gary basically told everyone my instagram handle and said to follow me and keep me accountable basically which pros and cons mm -hmm. um I think because of the industry I grew up in with my mom's company, like the wedding industry is probably one of the most stressful industries out there. Mm. Um, I think growing up in that, I was already used to pressure. Mm. And with this, I just remember the adrenaline rushing in my body. Mm. I've never experienced the adrenaline do or die moment ever in my mm. life. And I can distinctly remember that feeling. And it was immediate. It was immediate. People were following me and the messages and the DMs and the emails, like they were finding every way to contact me. Mm. Like luckily no one ever found my phone number. I don't know how, but they found me through LinkedIn. They found me through Instagram, Facebook, like any platform I had, they found me on social mm. media and they were DMing me. And it was just what you said. It was, I'm watching you with the eyeball emojis. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. Okay. Um, it was just do or die. Uh, there wasn't any space or possibility for me to fail because that's what I told myself. Like, mm. Taylor, you better do something because this is like a once in a lifetime moment. Mm. And I think most people probably would have either cracked under mm. that. Um, but I think just because I grew up in pressure and, you know, figuring it out in the moment mm. that I was equipped enough to just take it and run with it. But mm. also because I told myself, don't give a shit about what anyone thinks. Mm. Um, I think the duality of that, of being well under pressure and then not caring what anybody thought about me mm. were the two things that helped me get through it. Um, an overwhelming majority of the people who were following me were very positive. Mm. Even when I met Gary in person like a year later, yeah. he had said, you know, how many of those people, you know, gave you shit? Like, mm. how many of them, like, ripped you apart? And, like, yeah. you know, the larger you're following, the more negativity you get yeah. as well. And funny enough, I remember maybe three comments mm. that were of people just totally ripping me yeah. and my personality isn't to just attack back right away so I was like watching this happening and my followers who had mm. now you know been following me they were attacking the people for me mm. so I didn't even have to do it I'm like this is great and yeah, after maybe yeah <laughs> and maybe after like a week or two I just didn't get any negative comments anymore and I, I can honestly say, like, I just don't get them. Uh, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, that was wild. That was a wild thing to go through. Yeah, so I think there was, like, a good um, thought behind it, what Gary said, like, go and comment yeah. and, and follow her. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, obviously hard also to, to, like, handle that outside pressure and you need to have confidence in yourself and not mm -hmm. care too much about like judgment and listen more to what you want to do yeah um, so yeah I uh, I think that you have really done a great job with uh, you. how you handle that and like how you arrange this trip to Bali and thank stuff. you so, yeah. yeah it's been a been a wild journey the last three years mm. Damn, it's almost been three years since that happened. 2017. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot's changed. And it's not even like I've changed. It's 
I think I've just become more of who I was always meant to be in the whole process of it, mm. which is very interesting. And you mentioned your uh, clothing, br clothing brand, the DNA. Yeah. Uh, do you have any plans or of taking it up in the future, or do you have any other like business ideas you want to? Yeah. Try out. Uh, so, DNA is kind of like my baby. Um, mm. It's still something that I would love to relaunch and do it again the right way. Uh, because of my knowledge and background in the fashion industry, it takes a lot of money to produce a clothing line and collection mm -hmm. that isn't just drop shipping a one-off t-shirt, which is how DNA started because I had no money to build the clothing brand I had always wanted. Mm -hmm. DNA always was meant to be the travel industry's apparel brand. Uh, and I never financially was able to get, you know, I could have taken out a loan, let's be honest. There were options for me. Um, but taking out a loan for like $50,000 to get, you know, patterns made and first runs and drafts and all the apparel that I actually wanted to create, not just graphic t-shirts, mm -hmm. I just decided to put that on the side burner for right now because there were other things that, you know, I was just as passionate about potentially that I could create without having that kind of heavy investment. Um, after college, you have so much college debt, I just didn't want to add to the pile. Yeah. So DNA is on a back burner at the moment, but it is still my dream to bring that back and have it be the number one travel apparel brand ever. And for me, travel apparel is just extremely comfortable stuff mm. that you want to travel in but also wear every day mm. so it's like it is like a lifestyle brand but I got it in my brain there is ideas yeah. behind that uh, I think for right now I'm really excited and focused to just creep keep creating more of these trips mm. and I think through doing more of these trips I'm networking more with people that I'm connecting with who are really powerful beings uh, like this woman in Virginia who started Humans I Trust and did that spiritual mm. entrepreneur mastermind I went to. She's a fucking rock star. Mm. So like connecting into those and you know being able to just elevate these experiences and trips that I have, I'm really enjoying it. Like This is actually the second one I've done. I did one in Mexico for my Facebook group. They wanted a meetup. So mm. I made this five-day trip to Mexico last year, so December of 2018, and, you know, I had a ton of fun with that, so this is just kind of an elevated version of that, and I think mm -hmm. I want to just keep growing that, because mm -hmm. there's something beautiful about helping people transition from the rut, being lost, or not having clarity on exactly what it is that they want to do, and they're still navigating that space. Mm -hmm. I've been having a ton of fun helping people navigate through that, because, mm -hmm. I feel like I've gotten to a place in my own self where I'm happy, you know, on my path. Mm -hmm. And I think if I can help other people get happy on their journey as well, it changes the name of the game. It changes mm -hmm. their life. Like if people are on the path of building something, but they're not happy in the process, mm -hmm. they're just going to be miserable and hate their life every day. And they're not going to want to wake up every day. Like I was there. I get it. So I think this is kind of, you know, the thing that I'm focusing on. Mm. And, you know, I'm still deep diving into what it is that I'm doing. And, you know, I think I have gifts that I can bring to the world. And I'm just mm. kind of honing in on what those are right now. Um, so I still invest in myself. I still have coaches. Mm. I hire people to help me get into that space of being able to just help others more. And mm. that's kind of what I've been focusing on more recently. Yeah, and I really like how you said, like how important it is to love the process and not just mm. like strive for a goal. Like, yeah. Um, when I look back on like everything that I've been trying to accomplish in my life, like when I was younger, I always had those like high ambitions, and I was working hard for a couple of months, mm -hmm. and then I was like, uh, didn't have the motivation so much, and I didn't work as hard for like a couple of weeks. Uh, and then I realized, like, this is 
going to take a while and yeah. I need to think more long term and I need to enjoy the process of getting there yeah. and trying to like create routines and habits that I feel like oh this is something that I can do every day uh, and like even if I don't reach the goal I feel like I take one step forward every day and I'm developing and I'm enjoying that process and I think that's so important. Yeah it's it's literally like if you're not having fun on the journey you're never going to be living in the present moment and one thing that I learned is if you're living in the past most likely you're living in depression and anxiety if you're living in the future you're again living in anxiety of never having it or you're always striving sort of for something better the grass is always greener syndrome the only moment that actually exists is the one right now mm -hmm. and if you're not living in the present you're not going to be grounded mm -hmm. and for me i know that's actually been a huge issue with why i have memory issues because mm -hmm. i've always been so forward thinking i never mm -hmm. look to the past i'm just depressed in the now mm -hmm. and always looking ahead and that wasn't a good way to live mm -hmm. so if you're not happy doing what you're doing in the process, then maybe it's not the thing that you want to do. Because if you're like, oh, when I get to that place, then I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. That's not how life works. Like, sorry, yeah. guys. Like, exactly. when you get to that thing, you're still not going to be happy. I've known enough people now in my journey of, like, you know, meeting people and networking over the last couple of years. It's just not how it works. So that's – it's been a huge – learning process and you know you could even go through like a 90 day run like maybe you commit 90 days in the short term of you know maybe putting some of the things that make you happy aside and grind it out and just like get through trudges and maybe you turn decades into days in those mm -hmm. 90 days but if along the journey long term you're not happy then it's just not right it's not the right path yeah i totally agree uh and uh I need to actually plug in the charger to the computer. Yeah. It's and last time I did it before the live, uh, the I lost the connection. So. Oh. So just a heads up. Fingers uh, crossed. Fingers if, if crossed. We disappear. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here. That is it. <laughs> so hopefully this will work. Uh, I'm gonna try it on the other side so I don't touch the. We'll find out. Adapter. Are they very good? Yay! Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, so I think we are going to end this shortly. But sure. before we end, I want to ask you some quick questions. Yeah, quick questions. Let's yeah. do it. So uh, what uh, item would you take to a deserted island? Oh. Um. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> what item? Like a survival item or like a fun item? It's up to you. Oh, God. It's an open question. I would probably take a journal and pen. Hmm? For me, that would be that. Yeah. I can see how we, why you answer that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, name one thing that is underrated. Mm. I think your journey of self-awareness is mm. super underrated. That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. uh, one thing that is overrated. Mm. I'm going to hurt a lot of people with this one. Um, one thing that's overrated, all the uh, Instagram influencers who post about cars and money. Mm. Like uh, showing a facade that isn't yeah. true. Yeah, showing that that's what's important because mm. it's really not. Yeah. Overrated. What's the best place you've been to? Oh, God. Asking a girl who loves to travel the world and just picking yeah. one. <laughs> I'm going to say Bali. I'm going to say this place has been so special in so many different ways mm -hmm. that this would be a place that I come back to again and again and again. Yeah, I can't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> What are three things that you want to teach your children? Like top three mm. priorities I want them to That learn. people should learn. Yeah. Self-awareness. Their passion. And playfulness. Just mm. having fun. 
Yeah. That's a good mix. Yeah. Uh, if you could change one thing in the past, what would that be? Mm. Changing one thing in the past. In all reality, I don't think I would change anything because it's gotten to me to where I am today. Mm. But if I had to, I probably... God, that's tough because I wouldn't actually change anything. Can that be my answer? I wouldn't change anything? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Maybe I would have started journaling more. Yeah. I'll put that in there. I would have journaled more mm. so I could remember more. That's also good for like repetition when you yeah when you I think that it's like a triangle of how you learn stuff and like how much percentage you learn by reading and watching and yeah I think teaching is the way that you learn the most because then you're actually mm -hmm. talking and showing with your hands and stuff so yeah yeah just writing down is like repetition what you already learned so it will help helps you, you remember yeah, yeah. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> I barely look six months ahead, let alone five years. But five years, I'm sure as hell going to be financially independent and pay off all my debt. Like, mm -hmm. that's without a doubt. I see myself in five years. Damn, in five years I'll be 30. Mm -hmm. Dirty 30. I, I hope before then I'll, you know, be on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. That's a that's a thing of mine. And just totally blissfully living the life I always dreamt of. Mm -hmm. I think I've spent a couple of years now navigating the first chunk of that. And that the next, you know, couple of years, I think in two years, I'll probably be there. Mm -hmm. So then we will be the age I am right now. Yeah! In five years, I'm going to be David. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the last question. Uh -huh. This might be a tough one. Ooh. Describe in one word what you would like the viewers to feel after watching this. Ooh. Hmm. I would say hope. Mm. They can do it too. Yeah. I'm not special. I'm not the chosen one. Mm. Like... Just on a journey. And if I can inspire hope in other people that they can get out of whatever space that they're in as well, or mm -hmm. I think that would be it. I like that. That's good. <laughs> so I hope you felt that while watching this. Mm. And yeah, thank you for watching this episode. And thank you, Taylor, so much yeah, for joining. Thank you. It was real fun. It so, was. Uh, that was great. I can't wait to repost this on my channel. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, hope you hope to see you guys in the next episode and don't forget to subscribe. Hit subscribe. the button here or something. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.